I was right. I called it. This is not a normal anime. Now you may be wondering what I'm talking about. Well, back before the season started, I was going through the upcoming anime on Mal, seeing if anything stood out. And Renee Flops had a different type of cover, so I was curious. I watched the trailer, it seemed to be a dumb harem show, but I was just like reading the post on the Mal forum, trying to get an idea like what would the show be, and someone theorized that there's something more going on here. So I got on board saying like, yes, I agree, this will not be a typical show that it might appear to be at first. I even tried reading the manga to get a feel for what the series would end up being, but it was a new manga, not very well known, so no one translated it. So I was trying to wade through the first chapter with a very limited knowledge of Japanese. And from what I could tell, it was a standard enough start with a main character somehow obsessed with bananas. Still don't get that point. Then the anime came out, and I was not ready. It started off simple enough. You have a main guy, Asahi. He meets his harem of transfer students, plus a transfer teacher. And then they all move into his home, which had magically become big enough to house them all. Also, it's the future for some reason. Then, hijinks ensue, the best girl war commences, and I questioned why I was watching this. No, it wasn't all bad. The comedy was funny, though it felt like it was leaning too hard on the perverted humor, and that caused some of the jokes to be more cringe than funny, and some of the jokes felt like they were making light of stuff that shouldn't be made light of, and plus it got repetitive with nearly every joke being a harem proclaiming their love for Asahi, who was rushing them off. But there's still some good here, even if it was kind of typical. Like, But you have Amelia having trouble with Japanese because of her being a transfer student, so Asahi helps her. And I also enjoyed Asahi helping Ilya work through those conflicts brought on by family expectations. That was pretty cool, too. And that made for a decent enough, enjoyable, mostly anime. But a few episodes in. Episode 5 specifically, things started to get weird. The characters all have their secrets, and they start coming out, and everything changes. The show went places I don't think I've ever seen another show go, at least not like this. The genres start to shift, and it's hard to know what is this show. Though its perverted hilarity remained through it all, so at least there's that. And you also have the characters deeply caring about each other, so at least a couple consistencies here. But then there's another shift. And we learn more, especially about Asahi and his past. The sci-fi setting comes into greater focus as well. And I learned that this is not just a weird comedy, but a really ambitious story, trying to do something special that can be rather somber and emotional at times. One of the things I love about this is how it recontextualizes everything we saw before and justifies many of the things that just seem weird. This is one of my favorite storytelling techniques, so to see it done here is just so satisfying. Even the title of the show is like this. It's so good. Through this, the show is able to explore a lot of ideas about technology, relationships, and love, and how they all come together. And despite being a futuristic setting, it uses this as a sort of mirror to our reality. And while we might not have the technology Asahi does, we have some similar choices. And I love that as the show brings the story together, it embraces everything that came before and wraps all these different aspects together. For a while, it seemed like the show was discarding the whole harem aspect, but then it came back in a way that fit. This anime is a harem, romance, comedy, tragedy, action, sci-fi, all the way to the end, all at once, and I would not have it any other way. So, altogether, this creates a very unique viewing experience. Though I don't know if it fully lives up to its potential because, like, the characters are somewhat basic, which works for the show with what it's doing, but there could have been more here. Yes, it's more about the story and concept, but I wish I had reason to talk about the girls more than just as the harem most of the time. I also feel like it took longer to get interested than it needed to. There are hints that there's something more going on, but it's not until episode 5 that they get any sort of focus, and before that it's just, like, really cliché. Still, despite these gripes, it's fantastic. It's very unique, and it pushes beyond limits and expectations to deliver a powerful story of technology, relationships, and what it means to find love. And because of that, I really do recommend it, so much so that I'm naming it my top anime of 2022. Now, this may seem like a stretch, 
I doubt people would argue that this is a unique show, especially if they see it, which not many people do. But why am I calling it Anime of the Year when you have things like Titan, Chainsaw Man, Spy Family, and so many others? Well, those are very standout shows, and I'm not the biggest fan of all of them. But those who have followed my channel for a while will know I have a special rule with my Anime of the Year selection. In order for an anime to be my top anime of the year, it has to be completed in that year, and all those others are continuing uh, to next year and possibly well beyond that. Which eliminates pretty much all the big shows. And I haven't really kept up with seasonal anime that year, so there goes all the other potential competition. So, of the limited, complete anime I've seen, Renee Flops is by far my favorite. So, yeah, gets my top anime of the year award, so go check it out. But there's a lot more to say with this one, though I can't do so without spoilers. So... Spoiler warning, if you don't want spoiled, go watch something else. One of the biggest things I found interesting was that once Asahi woke up, he had the choice to accept reality or accept the fictional world. And it shows how powerful of an escape from reality fiction can be. There's also the whole dependence on AI in the show, and we see the chaos when the AI goes down. And there's a lot more that could be gotten into with that, though that's where I'm going to leave it for now. After the show got further along, the idea of the need to keep moving forward is very prevalent. Now, this is not unusual at all for anime to talk about, but here it's different. Asahi lost eye and basically stopped doing anything, like stopped going to school, stopped trying to move beyond that. And his time with the harem was away from him to continue at that time with Ai, even though he didn't realize it at the time. He was wrapped up in a fictional world built upon the love that he lost, and as much fun as that time was, it wasn't something real. I especially loved how he saw Asahi and Ai's relationship through the memories of the girls, especially in episode 11. We saw a beautiful relationship, two people who deeply care about each other, but who were torn apart. And this begs the question, what do you do when the one you love is gone? And Asahi has a very challenging situation. How does he deal with it? And it seemed like throughout the show, him spending that final adventure with the girls to try and get to Ai, that was him in a way like putting that behind him, as sad as it was to see. And then the last thing I want to talk about here is just me nerding out about the portrayal of quantum computers in the show. Because these guys did their research, or at least a few Google searches. So there's a big computer here called Meta5, I think. I actually don't know because I wrote the script on an airplane and I have not gone back to double check this while before recording it. But anyway, this big computer is in space and is specifically a quantum computer. For those that don't know, a quantum computer is a type of very specialized computing hardware that can take advantage of subatomic properties to perform some calculations much faster than conventional computers. Today they're in their infancy, but they could have a lot of potential impact in various fields in the future including AI. And what is the quantum computer Renee Flops know, used for? They also mentioned that the quantum computer was made of time crystals. And there's been research done in making time crystals with quantum computers. Then it may seem weird that the quantum computer would just be sitting in space because why do you need to put a computer in space other than the fact that space is cool? But many types of quantum computers need to be extremely cold to work and space is quite cold. What's crazy, though, is that the quantum computers need to be even colder than space, so space might actually not be a good option. And just look at the picture of the quantum computer and look at the one that Google has. They look kind of similar, too, so that, I thought, is further proof that they were doing their research here. And consider what else the quantum computer is being used for. A virtual world. And it turns out that this actually is an application that may make a lot of sense. Uh, Stefan Alexander, a professor in cosmology at Brown University, argues that you would need a quantum computer to make a truly realistic virtual reality. So again, this fits. Now, is this a tangent where I'm talking about stuff I know nothing about? Yes, very much so. But at least I admit when I don't know what I'm talking about. So yeah, a lot going on with the show. A lot I think is really cool. So I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on it and anything tangentially related. Let me know your thoughts on the show too or anything about quantum computing because I think that stuff is really cool. And also let me know your favorite mind-blowing but overlooked anime because I cannot get enough of shows like that. 
Thank you so much for watching. I will be back next year with something. I don't know what yet, but I will be doing things. And I look forward to seeing you all then. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, we're not done here. Because I just saw the final episode. You see, today is December 28th, the day the final episode aired. I finished the script for the video and recorded it last night, before I saw the final episode. My hope was that I'd seen enough that nothing significant would happen in the final episode to change my opinions and make me have to change anything I recorded. The fact that I'm adding more to this video afterwards I should tell you how well that went. So, anyway, I watched it, got a lot of good screenshots, and really enjoyed the episode. Seeing Asahi with I was great. It really tied everything together about their relationship, their feelings, regrets, and love all together, and it was great. It was super emotional and the perfect way to conclude all the ideas throughout the show of moving forward but not forgetting the past. Then we got a time skip to Asahi going to university, surrounded by new friends. This is great. Then we saw him visiting I's grave. Again, great, showing that he's cherishing those memories. And really just the perfect end to a wonderful show. But then the harem shows up at his apartment. This is a zany, fun, happy ending twist in the show with a happy feeling. Now, normally I don't mind endings like this. It can be a great catharsis to give the characters the happy ending that they worked for. But what were those ideas explored those last few episodes? That Asahi needs to learn to move on from I, that he shouldn't just jump into the world of AIs and forget about reality. The harem also represents I, because they are made from her, so having them come back reverses him being willing to move on. And having them come back also undercuts how sad the last few episodes were. Asahi remembered that he lost I, the harem then sacrificed himself to help him reach I in the virtual world. This is all super emotional and just really good. But with them back here, what did they sacrifice? Sure, they didn't know that they'd be coming back at the time, so their sacrifice had meaning based on what they did know. But in a broader sense, their sacrifice was about how sad and tragic love is. Sometimes love just plain sucks, and it's not fair, and it just hurts. Love is still worthwhile, and the show is all about the good outweighing the bad, but they are still bad here, and the show shouldn't ignore that just to give us a happy ending. I could rant about anime as a whole here, but I'll save that for another video. Fundamentally, though, does it change my view on the anime as a whole? I don't know. If I pretend those last few minutes didn't exist, I would say this is a fantastic show. But I'm reviewing the show. I'm judging it as a whole, so I can't just ignore the parts I don't like. If I did, I could even say Rent a Girlfriend was a good show because it had like three good episodes. And while plot-wise the harem showing up is fine with the whole AI thing, the thing I loved so much is the ideas explored, the themes. And in order for plot events to work, they have to line up with the themes, otherwise they just feel out of place. Though maybe I could see this as him being able to have fun times with those he loved because he was able to move on in the past. That sort of fits, though maybe I'm biased because I really want to like this show because it's like that underrated gem I always tell people to watch because it's awesome. That I could also be biased in the other way because I really get annoyed when shows just pull a happy ending out of nowhere because they want a happy ending. Again, a rant for another time. So yes, uh, tell me your thoughts on the end. And for real, I'm going to go now and I'm going to edit this and I just add like four minutes of audio. Hopefully this will be out tonight. Talk to you later.